Now I ask you, is this just the cutest thing you've ever seen? Of course, the Fiat 500 has always been that. It's been economical. It's been a lot of things. This one is fast. It's called the Fiat Abarth. Yep, this is the Fiat 500 Abarth, and I know what you're thinking. How cute, how funny, how goofy. Well, when gas hits $5 a gallon, you'll be amazed at how ungoofy this car looks. And beyond that, there is one thing visually that sets this car apart from the regular 500. This little Scorpion logo. That is the sign of the Italian tuning and race car maker Abarth, which was founded by an Austrian, actually. So first you start with the cute little Fiat 500. And to be fair, Fiat has some bad vibes to overcome. Now, when folks of my generation think of Fiat, they think of these cars, the 124 Spider and others. Now, I myself owned a Spider, and although it was a very nice little car for me, for others, it was a troublesome, leaky hunk of excrement made entirely of compressed rust. Too harsh? Uh, perhaps, but that's the hill Fiat must climb with my generation. Now, for those who are younger, well, they never heard of it. So the 500 is that cool little sort of Mini Cooperish thing that Jennifer Lopez drove on TV. The real 500 dates back to the late 50s. It was just as small, just as economical, and had that sort of Fellini, Mastriani, black and white art film sort of feel. Now, the new one is funky and slow. Under the hood is a 1.4-liter engine that is willing enough, but has only 101 horsepower at its disposal. That means you can measure acceleration with a sundial, with 60 miles per hour coming up in 9.6 seconds. That's where the Abarth comes in. First slap a turbo on that sad little puppy of an engine, and immediately give it another 60 horsepower. Make the entire suspension 40% stiffer, Throw in some nifty racing seats and a comical attempt to make the cutie pie front end look more menacing, and you have the Abarth. Now, the little Fiat 500 has always been cute. It's always been economical. When you add the name Abarth, though, it becomes fast. Zero to 60 drops to 6.8 seconds, and top speed is around 130 miles per hour, and the car sticks now. Okay, not like a true sports car, but in the ballpark with a Mini Cooper. The gearbox is nice, if a little loose. The car is reasonably well equipped for 22,000 with electric windows and mirrors. All the amenities, including satellite radio, even a rear wiper. Ours had some upgrades, some of them silly, like the red mirror caps, and ended up just north of 27,000. Now, frankly, to me, that's too much, so use a little discretion with the options list. Now, on a trip to Houston, I got nearly 40 miles per gallon with the regular 500. Well, the Abarth ended up in the high 20s. Eh, performance has a price. But compared to a Mini Cooper, I would probably still opt for the British machine, though the Abarth makes that choice darn tough. Versus a VW Beetle, eh, the regular Fiat 500 is more stylish and more fun. And as an old 60s guy, I can't believe we still have these three economy car choices again in the 21st century. The Fiat 500 Abarth is miles ahead of the basic version, and that car was pretty fun to drive. Think of it as giving you 40% more power with 100% of the cute. That's the Fiat Abarth. Is it worth the difference in price? Well, once you drive it, you'll understand. That's our road test. I'm Roger Gray. I'll see you on the road.